Okay, exam two, number 43. This one was about an AHU and a core riser. And we got a pump, a couple of chillers, an air handling unit, and a control valve that has to get through. We know the height of the building. We know this thing's in the basement. There's eight floors. In this problem, we find head loss for the length of pipe, 240 feet, was new. I used 120 feet. Head loss for the AHU and chiller. Why don't we account for Z equals 120 feet of elevation? So the question was, what's the head added by the pump? Any, uh, anybody have any ideas here? Why don't we count for Z equals 120 feet of elevation? You can unmute and just shout it out or type it in the chat if you have some thoughts. Or maybe you think we should account for the 120, in which case I'd like to hear the arguments. I think I had a similar problem to this, but like if you're calculating the, I guess the head loss across the AHU and chiller on the same elevation, you know, on the height of the building, then the differential wouldn't account for the height of the building, right? Well, the chiller is on is in the basement and the air handler's on the eighth floor. Does that change anything? No, because you're counting for the head loss. Uh, what's it called? The pressure drop. Um, what's it called between the AHU and the chip and the uh, oh, and the chiller? Hmm. Okay. So so what are the? Let's list. Let's let's work together to list all of the things that should contribute to the head added by the pump. Like, how should we think about that? I think you just said it, part of it, at least anyway. So if I were to say head added by the pump equals what? Or maybe we don't need to be too, um, I don't know if we need to be formulaic here, but let's just say it's a function of what? What are the inputs to how much uh, head pressure this pump needs to be able to generate? You said it before, Tandy. Don't leave me hanging. It's, uh, give me a second. It's uh, oh, row, the height. The height. Of water, column height of water. The column of water, okay. Well, the, the, let's hold off on the column height because I think that's kind of what's under question here, but there are some elements that definitely need to be included. Okay, differential on the chillers and the coil and height. So the function of pressure is what's it called? Density and gravity, right? Rho GH. For the height of the wa water column? Rho GH. I'm going to take this... Uh, this written submission here, differential on the chillers and valve. And really the air handler too. So it's the pressure drop. Let's call the basement, the pressure drop of the chillers. So I'll just call that H chillers. And then for the eighth floor, we'll call that the pressure drop of the air handler, which will be inclusive of the air handler and its control valve, or maybe it's a balancing valve, but we'll just kind of lump that all into one. So the AHU. And what else? You need the height up and the height going down. Yes, that's the key idea. So if this is a 120 foot building, there's a 120 foot column of water sitting on both sides of this pump. So on the supply side, you have to drive that water up 120 feet high. However, once it gets up there on the suction side, you have a 120 foot column of water helping push through the suction side of that pump and around and around we go. So it helps you as much as it hurts you to go up that height. And that's why there's no Delta Z because it's a closed loop. If we were pumping something up to the eighth floor and then just discharging it on the eighth floor, then we would absolutely need a Z equals 120 foot term included in the solution. So we would have to tack that on here. But in this situation, going up 120 feet, coming down 120 feet. So we don't need that at all. 
But there is something else that we need that's very important. There's one more piece to this. What else is missing? Across the park? Yeah, That's there could there could be, well, really the pump, the delta P across the pump, the head added by the pump is going to be the, the pressure drop of the chillers, the pressure drop through the HU, and one more thing. The control valve is valid, um, Riley. I just, I kind of lumped that into the AHU. So I'm assuming the control valve is in here. Yeah, good point though. Friction pressure. What was that? Friction pressure in real world. Friction, yes. Friction loss through pipe. Thank you, um, Suba and Tundi. HF, of course, we've got, 120 feet of pipe going up and down, whatever the size of that pipe, there's some GPM, maybe it's water in a steel pipe, uh, if it's chilled water. So we have the ability to figure out what that HF is. And I won't drag you through that whole process here, but we have to quantify that number. And it's gonna be a function of the length because it's the Darcy equation, right? F L V squared over two DG. So the length is an input to that. And that length is gonna be 240 feet. It's actually probably a bit more than 240 feet. But the way I kind of wrote this problem, I was trying to make it a little bit real life example. Um, I made it a core riser. <laughs> so the idea being this, the pipes going straight up the building from the chiller and then coming straight back down after. And uh, not a lot of horizontal runs to kind of add on there. So you should be within a reasonable level of accuracy there. Yeah, so good question. And I think this comes up often, right? I think we get very used to accounting for the height. There's an elevation change here. Why isn't that included? And it's really important to know that for a closed loop, that um, the pressure associated with that column of water being on both sides of the pump is going to have a canceling effect. And this is all we need to get the answer. Good question. I think every candidate has to go through this kind of a question at some point in their process. You got to scratch your head for a while. Once you get it, you get it. But until you kind of come to one of these and and deal with it, <laughs> you might be uh, you might be a bit confused. <laughs>